Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday the 20, 20 Sunday the 24th. So today, um, we actually got a really good night's sleep, so that's great because I've, I've, I haven't really got that in a while, so I'm glad that I got some sleep. But um, just as a side note to tell you guys, because I can and because Giselle's in the room and it's funny, last night, um, you know, we were sleeping and then my little sister, she rolled over on the bed, and, like, because we are like, showing her bed or whatever, and she put her hand, like, like right here. So, <laughs> I don't know why, I guess it was just because of, like, the mom whatever because um you know my dog like my little chihuahua princess we had to leave her behind on this trip one because it was too long two the hotel didn't um allow dogs but when we left she kind of got sick she had like a little eye infection so we took her to the vet and turns out she had like an eye infection so we had to leave her with a comb and leave her with my dad and i felt really bad about that so i guess it was just me missing her that i kind of started dreaming about her you know hoping then she was okay and just praying but then giselle put her hand like right here on me because she was asleep you know she didn't she didn't know but i thought it was princess for a second <clears throat> excuse me i don't really know why i thought it was but i guess i just kind of missed her because i don't know whenever we leave her be behind and especially for a long time i feel kind of bad but i missed her and i thought it was hers so i started petting her hand in the middle of the night and we and then oh my god then i woke up and realized it wasn't her obviously and it was giselle's hand so i kind of like flicked it back and she was like oh and i told her it now and we were both laughing for several minutes on the, on um in the room but it was okay and it was kind of funny so right now, uh, my parents are kind of away. They're at like a meeting. I think it's for like a timeshare thing, which we all know how evil those can get sometimes. But um, they're gonna be back any minute, and we're gonna head. We're gonna head out. I'm gonna get changed, obviously, because I'm still in my pajamas. We're gonna get going to Sedona. So I'm gonna get dressed right now, and then afterwards, we're just gonna head on the road. And I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What if I want? Go to the left and then go to the right. Bobby's barbecue. Drugs coming. Would you rather hear strange voices in the night or see strange shadows in the wall? Oh. Uh, That's cool. The second one. The first one would freak me out. So voices or shadows? Shadows. Really? Yeah. So kind of a change of plans. I know. Stop. Nice voice crack. <laughs> I didn't have a voice crack. Anyway. So originally we were going to go to, S to Sedona. But we've already been there before, so we already know the, kind of like the scenery and stuff, and we already know how gorgeous it is. So instead, we kind of switched it up a little bit, and we're at this uh, boom town founded in late 1800s. It's called Jerome. Um, not a very scary name, but um, it's pretty cool up here, and we're checking out the scenery. Um, we put a reservation down at this restaurant called The Haunted, the Haunted Burger, something like that. Um, it's a 45-minute wait, so we're going to be walking around town, seeing all the cute shops they have. And... Apparently this place was haunted because there was a originally like a gold mine or a silver mine and um, There's been rumors that it's been haunted. So the view over here is so awesome Like we're at the top of a mountain several hundred feet. I can see all of Cornville from up here and um, the ghost town It's kind of creepy. Everything's like all like old-timey, but I think it is kind of cute and even in the distance if you look this way I'm not sure if you can see but wait for it wait Somewhere in the distance, you can see the San Francisco peaks. The sun is shining in my face, so I can't really show you guys. But over there, there's the San Francisco peaks where we were the other day at Flagstaff. And I think that's gorgeous seeing it from this distance. You can see the, um, the mountains covered in snow, and that's cool. And not walking in the middle of the way to take a picture, Giselle. In the middle of the road. Okay. And we're going to check out some more boutiques. It's a kaleidoscope shop. 
Kaleidoscope. So pretty. Dancing. <laughs> or making you dance. <laughs> oh, I remember these things. They never have my name on them though, because it's always spelled differently. D I A N A. Where's my Dale, Dan, Danny, Dave. David, Dennis, I'm gonna give them Diana, one. see, I knew it. D-I-A-N-A. -A. It's gonna, never here. I'm gonna get one no. for, for Kyle. It's kind of funny. I know we. I know I said that I wasn't gonna end up going to um, Sedona because we've already been there with my family. But when we woke up this morning, I checked the reservation I made for Embry Riddle, and turns out it's not. At, it's not until one o'clock when I previously thought it would be at about eight. So I thought we'd be leaving pretty early. But then when I realized it was actually one o'clock, we had basically the day or like the early or part of the day to walk around and you know explore a bit. So my parents decided why not go uh, 30 minutes north and head to Sedona. So we've been here for the past few hours. We've been looking at these little boutiques um, at Tila Kipake. That's the name of the little, um, like the Pueblo. And it's really cute. They have a ton of little boutiques and it has like old style, like Pueblo buildings, which I think is adorable. It's expensive though, but we ended up buying a few little, um, a few little trinkets and bracelets and we looked around. So now that it's um, heading at about noon, it takes an hour or so to get to Prescott. So we're gonna head on the road and yeah, just check out the college. We're here at the visitor center. I'm freaking out with excitement. It's gonna happen. Oh my God. <laughs> this is just our showroom, so you can kind of get a feel for how big the room is. Um, it comes all furnished, so all you have to do is bring like bedding, clothes, <laughs> all that good stuff. So wait, you don't have to bring your own bed? Nope. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> what if you want to, like, just just for like kicks and giggles? Could you like get rid of this one and like put yours in? Possibly. <laughs> You might be able to. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure on that, but if you want, we can get you in touch with the housing office. <laughs> There's three meals that you can have at a different location on campus without an additional charge. Um, and so, in the upper class in housing, the village, we have a Simply To Go, which is kind of like a convenience store, so it has snacks as well as toiletries, different things like that. You can purchase items there. Yeah, I heard the car too. This is Air Hearts. Air hurts. Oh my god. Alright, you guys can go. So like I was saying, these items up here are items that you can purchase if you're dining dollars, but then once you swipe in, everything is unlimited for you. So the place with bags, backpacks, laptops, I don't know, whatever you want. Air hurts. So cute. Your chairs. Of aviation. Are you gonna get churros? No, we're getting one hot cocoa. Oh, All right, cool. Uh, we also take cart if you don't have cash. And uh, sorry, a churro yeah. and a hot cocoa. Skyrocket, which is the first aircraft to be able to travel off two or two times speed. Outside, that is the Winton Mall for the X50 Dragonfly. And so uh, it was a joint project between. NASA, the Navy, McDonnell Douglas, and the goal is to have an aircraft that could take off vertically like a helicopter and then transition into horizontal flight like an airplane. And it failed absolutely every time and they stopped working on it eventually. 
Um, we have to remind students that you can be super smart with you. So it's kind of fun. We're really excited. <laughs> we got our electronics officially connected and powered, like uh, independently powered last week, so it's super exciting. Um, right here is our structural dynamics lab, so you can not, oh, you can kind of see it. There's a little shaker table in the center of the room right there, and it vibrates on the X and Y axis. So you bring different structures that you've created and you can test takeoff frequencies as well as test for resonance frequencies because when you hit a resonance frequency, resonance frequency of any material, that's going to be my sophomore year. Definitely a highlight for campus. It's new, so yay. Um, let's see. We'll start talking about the planetarium. So it's a 47-foot diameter dome, and there's two projectors to create a 4K resolution on the screen. You can look at things up close that you'd see in a microscope or as far away as planets and stars, obviously. Um, some of the cool things that we do in here is every once in a while we'll do a live feed from the observatory on campus, and then a space physics professor or an astronomy professor will come in and talk about what you're looking at. Um, we do public shows most weekends, and so that'll be Friday night, and then Saturday in the afternoon, and then in the evening. Um, so we'll do like the Prescott night sky depending on the season, or we'll do like the moons in our, our solar system, uh, lots of different shows. So there's always events happening here. Here on campus, we have records, <laughs> um, cashier's office, there's safety and security. We do have an armed guard here on campus 24-7. Um, we also have the student veterans really close to the dining hall like it was just pretty much walk through some parking lots to get there and we walked all the way around campus and then found it on our way back to the door because we were giving up. This is the Academy Airport. Um, one thing that's really cool, I think, is that the simulation actually changes. So you can change it with the weather. So, like, the, I gave a tour like a week ago and it was snowy. That's kind of fun. Um, Santa like comes in on his sleigh. Oh. But yeah, so this is where you get practice. Just you get, so it's a 360 degree view. Um, yeah, definitely bumps that up. Yeah. Kind of like a UN type deal. You represent different countries and you have to avoid conflict and crises. whiteboards that you can wheel around to work out larger problems. We have our undergraduate research institute, which is just another place where you can work on research projects. Um, we also have a lot of reference manuals, magazines, books, um, textbooks that you can check out while you're here in the library if you don't want to buy one. Um, but all this stuff is there for you to use. <laughs> 